Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, as Nigel Farage aims to leverage Trump's win for all it's worth, I'd like to discuss whether his short-term gains could backfire over the course of this parliament. But first, for daily political commentary, please click the subscribe button so you don't miss out. So Donald Trump is going to be the US president for the vast majority of this parliament in the UK. Though, as it turns out, if Keir Starmer does not hold the election before summer 2029, then the only way Trump is still president at the end of it is if he seriously erodes the electoral system, which is possible. But that's also part of why I wonder if Farage's closeness to Trump or perceived closeness could backfire. Trump has not yet been inaugurated for a second time. His presidency is full of promise. But what he's promising to achieve are lies and what he's promising to do, which is not the same thing, much as with Farage's Brexit, will actually deliver the opposite of what he claims. You know, his, his tariffs, for example, if he slaps tariffs on all imports, then the cost of living, which cost the Democrats this year, will turn much of the public against Trump. That could even include the British public if it goes badly enough. When America sneezes, the rest of the world catches a cold. And there was some um, really interesting polling stateside. People there view inflation in entirely negative terms. And the majority don't think that to get it under control, you have to do something with trade-offs, downsides, such as reducing spending or increasing unemployment. In the UK, inflation is only seen as bad when people notice the impact, which most don't, most don't if it's a sort of a target. And when it's high, people tend to accept that something has to give. Now, whether that be, you know, wage constraint, which is what the Tories tried to push, or interest rates, which we've got from the Bank of England or whatever, they may not agree with how people decide to deal with it, which is why a government that presides over high inflation is in for a tough time. But they generally recognise that you are going to have to do something that is called in politics a tough decision to deal with it. Apparently not so much in America. So noticeable inflation is going to bite the government at the time on the arse. And Trump, if he does what he says he will, is going to produce noticeable inflation. Like he, sh you know, someone in his position should be able to profit here. Biden and the Democrats suffered from that post-COVID, post-war in Ukraine inflation surge brought back under control, he should be able to reap the benefits of that. But it sounds very much like he's going to actually stoke inflation. But Farage won't care how the American public view Trump. If the American public go, oh, we wish we hadn't voted for you now, you lunatic. He doesn't care about that. You know, only it's, it's only if his potential voters do. He will hope that they see him, that Trump that is, as a successful Reform UK type. And it's, it's what we can achieve over in Britain with Reform UK, with Farage. But Trump is not going to do anything but harm UK interests. He's not likely to support Ukraine. He is likely to apply tariffs to UK exports to the USA. He wants to open up the NHS to American vampires as the price for a trade deal. So wouldn't this actually work against Farage in the long run? It's like, well, maybe, but it depends how he spins it. First of all, I don't see a trade deal happening. The Labour government are talking about trade talks. Yes, of course, you always would. But I don't think we're serious about them. We know that any US president, doesn't matter who it is, would only agree to terms which favoured the very powerful pharmaceutical and agricultural lobbies in America. And the terms would probably have been a bit much for even the Conservatives to swallow Labour would run a mile. So I doubt there's any danger Farage gets into trouble here. Anything which doesn't happen, he can use to his advantage because he will just claim, but it would be brilliant if it did happen. So he can claim that a US trade deal would be great for Britain and that Labour are a barrier to it happening, whether because of their own red lines or just because they won't let him negotiate for them. If Trump triggers a global trade war, less clear cut, Trump will have done something to harm the UK and Farage will still support Trump. But whether so Farage suffers from the association depends largely on how the debate goes. I strongly suspect it will go like this. Farage will claim that he could have persuaded Trump to do the UK a favour 
but that Labour are blocking him from being an intermediary, which they are. Um, you know, so it's Labour's fault for not playing ball. Will people believe it? I think they might. After all, Labour can't afford to let people actually suffer from a trade war as well. Whether growth is hit or not, they have to make sure that people feel the cost of living is getting better or they are not going to be building a good campaign for the next election. So Labour's job will be to make sure that any trade war which occurs does not hit ordinary people in a way they can see. So they have to be able to see a trade war as abstract, not feel it. People will still realise it's bad because they'll be reading about it in the papers and everything in the papers is bad, but they won't feel it. So Farage can probably work with that. So I can certainly see how Farage absolutely leverages Trump's win to generate support from like-minded voters in Britain to make it seem that this is the way the wind is going. There's a reason he gave his first speech on returning from Magaland in Wales. They are targeting Welsh elections, then Scottish elections, and then a couple of years after that, British elections again. He wants to win seats in the Senate and Holyrood in 2026, then increase his hall in Westminster in 2029. And because Farage will keep getting as close to Trump as he can, he will spend the next few years claiming that anything that the British government managed to agree with the US government is actually because he helps behind the scenes. And anything we can't get agreement on, oh, that would be Labour's fault because they wouldn't help him uh, let him work behind the scenes, right? That's how it's going to work. We're going to see a grifting masterclass in operation. But as I've been discussing recently, Reform UK have been keen to distance themselves from Britain First and Tommy Robinson, including his supporters. And this is where it becomes relevant. The reason can only be so that they attract the sort of voters who might share his views on immigration, but do not approve of violence or disorder. But what if Trump brings violence and disorder to the United States? What if he proceeds with his stated policies without any of the caution of his first presidency, triggers civil unrest and crushes it mercilessly. Because Nigel Farage got into a spot of bother during the election campaign with his support for Vladimir Putin, right? And he tried to distance himself a little bit from it. But nonetheless, I mean, that's the sort of thing that upsets even a lot of Reform UK voters, not all of them. So if Trump becomes seen as being like just as bad as, as Putin or the same sort of uh, cut from the same cloth, the association could hurt Farage. Now, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. We know that Trump thinks he was too timid during his first term. We know he's surrounded himself with lunatics who have no moral compass or any sense of consequences. In fact, they are boasting about the fact that they're going to be rounding up millions of people, locking... They've even said they're going to lock children in cages and it's going to be glorious. Those are the people Trump has surrounded himself with. The worst case scenario, which some are predicting, may not happen. Apart from anything else, Trump doesn't have the power to do some of the things he wants. He'd need support from elsewhere. And you're going to say, yeah, but it looks like Republicans could gain control here of Congress. And it's like, yeah, but if they do, it's going to be marginal. And here's the thing. What Trump is going to do is going to stoke inflation in America. It's going to hit people's ability to, to pay for the cost of living. Now, Trump doesn't have to care about that because he doesn't have to care about any other elections. He's not going to win another election. He's not technically allowed to even stand in another election. So either he just backs out gracefully or as gracefully as he can manage in four years time or he changes things so that he remains in power by whatever method. But he doesn't have to worry about the next election. But there are Republicans on Capitol Hill who will do. And again, Trump doesn't have massive numbers there. So he may find he, we don't know that he's going to do everything he said he would do. And of the things he does want to do, we don't know he can get away with all of them. So, yes, I don't think all Republicans are crazy enough to go along with it all. Um, the question is really, are enough of them crazy enough? And with a marginal control, I suspect not. But we cannot rule out major disorder and violence in America. Trump still has powers of his own. And, of course, he has an awful lot of influence to bully Republicans, uh, you know, in Congress. 
Uh, and especially if things aren't going Trump's way, you can see him becoming increasingly volatile and more of the public suffering. Remember that Musk has actually promised to wreck the UK economy, uh, US economy, sorry, out, you know, it's, it's his plan. It's part of the plan. The US economy has to be shattered and then rebuilt. And he may well be an influential member of the next US administration. Basically, Farage thinks he's going to get a boost back in Britain because of Trump's success. I think he's probably right. But Trump, if Trump is as disastrous as I think he's going to be, then long before the Westminster general election, which is the main target for him, wouldn't that mean Farage will also take a hit from the Orange One's failure? The question, I suppose, is will Trump fail just badly enough that the American public lose faith in him, but Farage can spin it different ways back here? Or will his failure be so spectacular that it reverberates across the Atlantic? And Farage's close association puts off the very voters he's trying to attract by distancing his party from people like Tommy Robinson. Farage's short-term gain could lead to a backfire when it most matters. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. And you can click the join button for memberships as well. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later.